Pretty good. Good. Are we going to big ideas? Uh, yes. What page number? Uh, 491. I was going to set the odds as to what whether it would work on the first try or not. <laughs> yeah. It's about 50-50, I think. Yeah. Okay, let's see here. That should be big enough and not so blurry that we can't read it. Where are we starting? So problem 31 through 34. Okay. Get the instructions in there. Graph the function. All right. Obviously, everything begins with your ability to graph the sine curve and the cosine curve. Agree? Right. That yep. that is something you need to be able to do on command. Now, unfortunately, one of the negative parts about doing online tutoring is these kind of questions where you're supposed to graph it. Uh, I would much prefer it if I could make you the presenter, have you have a drawing tablet, and graph these. That would be the best test. But the next best thing is let's start with – here, let me do it over here. Think about that for a second. Yeah, that should work. <clears throat> Which curve is this? The sine. Okay. What's this point over here? <laughs> Bless you. Hey. What's uh, the point on the x-axis? Uh, two pi. Huh? One period of a sine curve or a cosine curve, which makes that point right there what? Pi. Right. Good enough for now, but notice it hits its peak at pi over 2, and it hits its bottom at 3 pi over 2. So all those are key numbers, those quadrangles. <clears throat> all right, so... Um, We'll just keep doing them the way we were doing them last time, where we graph everything but the phase shift, and then we throw in the phase shift at the end. Okay. This is the first time we've seen B. That's what that yeah. number is, is B. In other words, the sinusoid function being, that's B right there. Right. Now, the difference with B in sinusoids and in algebraic equations is that B is related to the period. That's what B means, which means also that the period is 2 pi over B. Okay? So, they give us a B here of 2. What does that make the period? Uh, it makes it pi. Exactly. Which means that instead of being able to draw this curve between 0 and 2 pi, i got to finish it between 0 and pi. So, it's got to look something like this. Okay. Right. In other words, it's a horizontal scrunch, which is the same thing that thing does in a polynomial. <clears throat> in other words, that is a horizontal. If it's greater than one, 
If it's a horizontal scrunch, if it's between zero and one, it's a horizontal stretch. Same thing is true and true. Exactly. Okay. So, so far, the only thing we've graphed is uh, the sine of 2x. That's what it would look like. Okay. Now let's apply the phase shift. What is the phase shift? C, first of all, what's C? The horizontal shift. Now up here, C is the phase shift. But in this problem, what is C? Pi. No. If C were pi, then this would read x minus pi. So negative pi? Yeah. Okay. In other words, it's always going to be the opposite of that sign right there. Remember, all your standards are x minus. So if you want to know what C is, it has to be minus pi, because then it would be x minus a minus pi, which would show up as x plus pi. What direction do we go now that we know C is negative? Um, left. Correct. And that's why it's important to know exactly what C is, because you end up realizing that positive C's shift right, Negative C's shift left. So how do I draw this curve now? Where do I start? Uh, so you start at negative pi? Yeah. If this is pi, this is about negative pi. And it's all I'm going to do. It doesn't change the shape. I am just going to draw the blue curve as closely as I can, only I'm going to start at negative pi instead of zero. Now, where am I going to end? At pi. No. What is the period of this blue? So zero. Yes. So that's where I'm going to end, and I have to draw the blue curve. Now, here's the way I draw it. Uh, first of all, I quarter it up. And the reason that's important is because it tells you where all your key points are. That point's on the curve. This point has to be right there. That's on the curve. Come back through the x-axis. That's on the curve. Go down to negative 1 at minus pi over 4. And come back to this point. That's on the curve. Now is all I got to do is connect the dots and make it look like that blue line. Only okay. shift it. Now notice something interesting. The green line and the blue line are the same curve. Right. In other words, the phase shift of pi did nothing. It took my blue curve and moved it exactly one period to the left. I could have moved it one period to the right. It would not have changed anything either. And I guess what, here's what I'm trying to say, is that that is exactly the same as the sine of 2x. Putting that phase shift in there did nothing because it was the same as the period. If you phase shift by the exact period, is all you do is put it on top of the other line. You're not, you're not creating a separate curve at all. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. So let's look at 32. You said 31 through 34? Yes. Okay. Let me erase... I'll erase everything, but I'm not going to erase the sinus light.
cosine curve on there. You know how to label this? Uh, yeah. Okay. As long as you know how to do it, I'll just go ahead and do it to speed things up. What's that point right there? Pi. Pi over 2 in our oh, right. yeah. in our normal. Yeah, pi. That point is pi. That point's 3 pi over 2. And that point's two. 2 pi. Okay. These quarter points are always the points where either you're crossing the x-axis or your, your peak or minimum. That's why they're so important. Okay. Now, what's the effect of the two do? Uh, it sh shrinks it. Okay. Makes the period what? Uh, just pi. Okay. So I know I got, I'm going to begin here. I'm going to end there. So I'm going to quarter it up, draw my points. I know that it begins actually right there, goes through that point, hits its minimum at pi over 2, comes back through the line of symmetry at 3 or at uh, 3 pi over 4, and ends up back there. So I'm going to draw a cosine curve. Notice this does change the shape of the curve. That is strictly that. Now, okay. what is the period of the blue cosine curve? So... When I say what is the period, I mean what is it from point to where it starts again? It's pi. pi. In other words, this, this is pi right there. Okay. So the period of the blue curve is pi, right? Now, they want us to do this last change, which is to phase shift it by pi. Is that going to do anything? Yes. No, it's not. It's going to give us the same curve. In other words, if I take a curve that has a period of pi and I phase shift it by pi, Okay, I'm going to start it out there at minus pi, and I'm going to start it up here. I'm going to, going to go down through there. I'm going to come up, and it's going to run right into the blue curve. In other words, it is the blue curve. So, in a way, they're, I, I guess the reason they're asking you this is to illustrate to you that if you phase shift it by the amount of the period, and we had to figure out that the period was pi. The normal period is 2 pi, but with this 2 right there, that makes the period pi. And then if you do a phase shift by the same amount as the period, it doesn't matter whether it's left or right. You do not create a different curve. And in fact, if I were to draw the complete blue curve, it would just be on top of that green curve and go on and on forever and forever. So the green curve is not different. So okay. I don't know what that means in terms of graphing it. I suppose what it means is the only thing you have to really graph is cosine of 2x. The teacher not going to be able to tell the difference. You're not going to be able to know that you didn't graph the phase shift one. They don't have you do it like I do it, do they, by using different colors? Uh, no. All right. Um, that's really kind of a nice way to do it because you see step by step how to do it. All right. Here we got one that has a lot going on. <clears throat> Hold on a second. 
My Windows Ink workspace is in molasses mode. Okay. So, <clears throat> I'm going to go through it step by step. Is that the way you want me to do it? I, I, I don't even know how to, another way to do it, to be honest. Um, other than step by step, I wouldn't know how to do the whole thing in one step. We're doing this one. Yep. What am I going to start off with? So, the... Um, What's my parent function is what I'm asking. Oh, so that is uh, f of x equals sine of x. Okay, so that's what we're going to start off with. Sine of x. That's why it's so imperative that you know these two functions and how to draw them and how to label every point that's important. Okay. okay. And I'll label that pi. Now, let's just take it from left to right. What is B? First of all, A is 1, right? Yep. B is what? Um, 1. No, wait, no. Uh, 1 half. Which makes the period what? It's always the next question after you... Put what B is. B isn't important. What's important is what's the period because we can't graph it unless we know the period. Remember the period is 2 pi over yeah. B. Right. So 2 pi over 1 half. So 2 pi over 1. Two, two. So it's 4 pi. All right. So the first thing we have to do is stretch this thing. In other words, notice that our B was less than 1, which is a horizontal stretch. So I'm going to draw it out to there, which is 4 pi. And I'm going to use blue. And what it means is I have to start it there. I'm going to reach my first high point right there. I'm going to come back through the x-axis right there. I'm going to hit my low point right there. I'm going to come back to zero right there. Okay. That takes care of that part. Now, I probably should have done that first, although it's easy enough to do now. What is that going to do? The plus 3. Uh, it's going to move it right 3. Nope, that's a vertical shift. Outside the function, that makes it vertical. Right. This 2 pi is inside the function. That makes it horizontal. This 3 pi is outside. Up, vertical shift up by 3 units. So where do I start? At three. Yeah. That's all I do is I'm going to draw the blue line. Only I'm going to draw it about that line of symmetry instead of the x-axis. But I'm going to go up to four. I'm going to go down to two. Um, that's right here. So I think something like that should be the blue line moved up three, three units. Now, this looks like it has a phase shift of plus two pi. Normally, you would say, well, that doesn't do anything. That's the normal period for sine waves, but it's not the normal period we're interested in. It's what's the period of this sine wave?
that we just drew, the blue and the green, both have the same period. Right, yeah. So is still 4 pi. Correct. Okay. Now, this 2 pi phase shift means that might make a difference. I'm going to, first of all, what is C? Uh, tell me what the, I don't care if you know what C is. Tell me what the phase shift is and which direction. That's all I need to know. So two pi and to the left. Correct. Okay. So I'm going to go to two pi. We'll call that minus two pi. And notice that this will not be the same as the green. The green has a period of 4 pi. I'm only shifting this 2 pi. So I'm still going to start right there. I'm going to draw the green curve only shifted 2 pi to the left. Well, if it starts at minus 2 pi, it's got to end at plus 2 pi. So I have right. to draw a sine curve, something like that. And that purple curve is the green curve shifted to the left by 2 pi. And notice they are not the same curve. They are different curves. Okay. Okay. Also notice that that purple line, I could call that a negative cosine curve. No, excuse me, a negative sine curve. Almost. In other words, these sinusoid functions can be called literally an infinite number of things. Uh, it's not only one function describes a curve. I can look at this as a negative sine curve instead of what we're looking at it, which is a sine curve with a phase shift. Lots of multiple answers could be correct here. All right. 34? Uh, yes. Okay, again, let's start out with cosine curve that I know I'm going to have to stretch. I'll make that 2 pi to start with. Makes that pi. I'll start there. I'm going to go through there. I'm going to hit there. What am I doing? I'm going to go through there. I'm going to go through that X. And it's going to look like this. Okay. Maybe it's this outlier. So that's cosine of X. Got a period of 2 pi. It goes from 1 to negative 1. That's cosine of x, one period of it. So, what's the half do? So, first of all, does that, that what does that affect? Yeah, tell me what the consequences of that are. So it stretches it. Okay. To four pi. So four pi, just like the last one. So I'm going right. to over here and put four pi. And I'm going to use a blue line to stretch it to 4 pi, which means now I do go through there. I bottom out there. I go back through there, end up right there. So now what's the next thing to do? The negative 3 pi. Probably not. Let's take care of this before we do any phase shifting. I guess it doesn't really matter uh, as long as there's no negative signs being applied as multipliers. We can do these in any order we want. So I really could do, I'll, I'll do it your way, just to show you that it doesn't matter. It's just that when you go to memorize it, you want to kind of do it the same way every time. All right, let's apply the 3 pi. What do I have to do? So you have to move it to the right, 3 pi. Okay. So I'm going to start it not there, but right there. Correct? 
In other words, I'm taking this point here and I'm moving it three pi right. to the right. So that's my new starting point. What's my ending point? Uh, Always the way you want to do these is you want a starting so, point and an ending point, then you'll be able to draw the graph really easy. So it's 7 pi. All right. Because the period was 4 pi. So I would have to end it right there. And that is actually like 7 pi over 2, which makes it 3.5 pi. But um, I'm going to draw it to minimize out like that. All right, so now I've gone left to right, and I've applied the phase shift. What's the last thing to do? Uh, do the points. Or, well, sorry, the uh, negative 5. Okay, what's that do? That moves it all down 5. Not all of it, just the green curve. Right, well, yeah, right. Yeah, so I haven't really given us room here, so I'm going to call that minus 4. And basically, that's where it would start. In other words, if that point is at 1, this point's going to be at minus 4. I'm going to end it the same way. going to bottom out something around there. And that is supposed to be the green curve. Nearly moved down by 5 units. Okay. So you can see that you can apply these really in any order you want. And if you want to go left to right, that's fine. The, the one thing that applies just like it applies with polynomials is that if you have reflections, those must be done first. See, okay. The only priority. If you do the reflections after some of the other shifts, you'll get a different curve. So just do the reflections first. All right. What else? All right. uh, problem 50. So you're right there. So it's okay. I see it. All right. These are pretty easy. Um, tell me what A is. So little a matches up with which curve? B. Okay. Let's, B. Look, let's look at little b. What is little b? Uh, C. Okay. And look at little c. First of all, what's the period on little c? That is uh, just pi. <clears throat> Which of these graphs only has a period of pi? Uh, both A and D. Correct. Well, we knew that already, didn't we? Um, so... A is, is uh, what's the phase shift? It's pi over two. Which way does that mean? Uh, to the right, pi over two. So if I took this curve right there, ooh, it's pi over two. That's not going to work. If I take this curve and shift it back pi over two, I would get that. Correct. Yep. Must be that. Got to be A. And then look at that one. I know that that has to be D. But why? Well, it's the cosine curve moved pi over 2 to the right. So if I took this curve and move it back to the left pi over 2... I get the perfect cosine curve. Now, that's kind of doing it a little backwards, but I think you get what I'm saying, don't you? 
Uh, yes. Bless you. <clears throat> Excuse me. In other words, the goal is to imagine what this curve looks like without the phase shift. And if I can see that the phase shift is pi over 2 to the right, then I'm going to move it back and see if it, wow, is that the cosine curve that I would get if I just had cosine of 2x? And the answer is yes, it would be. Okay. All right. What else? Uh, that's it. Okay. Sounds good. How's it going right. in general? What, how's your grade in math going? It's a high C, which yeah. isn't too bad. During last semester, it, by now it would be like an F or a low D. Okay. So, pretty good. Well, high C's are good, at least if I'm at McDonald's. But <laughs> it's always my drink of choice is a high C. Uh, I was trying to be funny. Okay. Yeah. Dimitri, I will talk to you next Tuesday at 7. All right. Yep. Talk to you then. Okay, bye-bye. All right, bye.